Hey there, welcome to LC Yoga. My name is Laura, and today's class is part of an introduction to yoga series. So if you've never done yoga before, or you're a beginner, you're gonna love this, because we're gonna take it really slow, and we're gonna do different types of classes that'll help you learn the different styles of yoga and figure out what might be right for you. So today's class is a slow flow. We're never actually going to leave the floor. We're gonna do a lot of seated poses and some basic stretches to kind of start to acclimate you to a yoga class. And next week, we're gonna do yin yoga, which is even slower, deeply meditative and relaxing. The week after that, we're gonna do a beginner flow class. So we're gonna do more standing poses and kind of learn the different uh, basic poses that you can expect to see in the majority of yoga classes. So if you're ready, go ahead and get on your mat and I'll meet you there. We'll begin today in kneeling. So go ahead and sit up on your heels. If this doesn't feel good on your knees, feel free to sit up higher. So you can put something between your hips and your heels to help your knees feel more comfortable. I'm just gonna snuggle in. Let the crown of the head reach up away from the sit bones. Hands can be on the thighs, maybe palms up. And we'll just take a moment here at the beginning of the class to close our eyes. And this is a great time to set an intention for the class, maybe for your yoga practice. An intention can be as simple as, and this is my favorite intention for any yoga class, is to leave everything else behind. When you're on your mat, there's nothing but you and the mat. Let everything else fall away. Now begin to deepen the breath. Deep inhale through the nose, maybe letting it out through an open mouth, just sigh it out. And as your breath starts to deepen, begin to notice where it goes. As it in, you inhale through the nose, you'll feel it kind of go down and into the lungs. And what moves? Your upper chest, the sides of your ribs, your belly. Where does that air go? And then notice as it goes out. A few more breaths like that. Maybe inhaling into the lower side ribs. You can even put your hands there. Send the air to that place. And then exhale it out. And you may have already noticed that you're starting to feel a little more chill, a little more relaxed. You can release your hands if you place them there. And that feeling from deep breath that you notice, you pay attention to, is the magic of yoga the fitness that comes from it, the hormone balancing, the muscles, the mobility, the flexibility, is all just kind of a happy side effect. For me, 
the biggest benefit is how it makes you feel on the inside. So now we'll add a little bit of movement. So let the hands sweep out to the sides and up overhead as you take a deep breath in. It's a little bit of a back bend as your chest presses up toward the sky. No crunching in the lower back. Come forward if you feel it. Deep breath in and as you exhale, cactus the arms and let the arms float back down. Inhaling, do that again. Sweep the arms up. And then exhale, cactus the arms and lower them down. Just releasing the shoulder muscles and the upper back. Inhaling. And exhaling. I sit a lot for work, so this is a really great way to release the trapezoid muscles. Did I say trapezoid? Trapezius muscles? <laughs> a little eighth grade math there for you. Inhaling one more time, reach up. Trapezius muscles, your shoulder muscles and upper back, they run along the spine. They're what get really tired and crunched when you sit a lot. Let the arms go forward as you round the spine. And then on up, back to where they were. Inhaling. Exhale, let them come back down. I can't get over that trapezoid. Okay. Inhale, reach them forward and round. All the way up. And exhaling, bring them down. Last time like that. Inhale. And exhale. Now this time, bring the hands behind you and interlace the fingers. Start to pull the arms towards straight. They don't have to straight. Just stretching into the chest and the shoulders. The palms can be together or apart, depending on your shoulders and what feels good. Just press the hands up to increase the stretch. And then release that, grab a hold of the knees and round the spine gently. And we'll do that one more time. Interlace the fingers behind your back. Press the chest up and away from your toes. Deep breath. And then exhaling around the spine, grab the knees. Just counter stretch that. And then come to a neutral spine, hands on the thighs. Now the reason we did that and I started that way is the linking of breath and movement is critical in yoga, especially the type that I tend to teach, which is vinyasa yoga. We're actually not doing that kind today, but linking breath and movement and focusing on the breath through your yoga class is what sort of transports you out of your day-to-day -day life and onto the mat. You know, let's everything else fall away and brings you right here because you're just focusing on the breath. So as you move through the class today, you'll hear me cue breathing, but I'm not going to do it constantly. But if you if your mind shifts away from the breath, see if you can bring it back. And that's where that deep, peaceful feeling comes from. So now we'll move on. We're going to add a side stretch. We're just going to scoot the hips over to the left. Now, again, if this isn't good for the knees, you can sit up on something. So you can put a pillow there so that you're still off center, but you're not sitting on the floor. All right, be kind to your knees. If you feel any pinching or tweaking, make sure you sit up on something. But we're just going to side stretch here. So you're going to place your right hand down. By the way, I scooted over to the left. So place your right hand down and then reach your left arm up. Now turn your chest toward your left armpit. So you're going to kind of twist a little toward the left. And then you'll start to add the side bend. Just gently pressing over toward the right, very gently. And really what you're doing is pressing your armpit away from your feet. So you've got this long line of energy that's kind of going like that, and that's what adds the side bend. So we're not just crunching over toward the right, we're really expanding out and away. And that's a nice, high quality stretch. 
And just deep breaths into that, any sensation you feel on the left hand side. Again, if you're feeling any tweaking in the knee, you can also straighten your right knee out. That may help that if that inward rotation in the knee doesn't feel good. A couple more breaths here. And then release that. And we're gonna take our right foot, we're gonna leave the left leg where it is. If you're sitting up on something, come on down to the ground. And then we're gonna place the right foot over on the left side of the left knee. So you're kind of in this seated, we're gonna take a seated spinal twist. So your right knee is going straight up toward the ceiling. So if it's kind of like this, you wanna press it up toward the ceiling over toward the left. Now, if that doesn't feel good on your bottom knee, you can straighten that one out. But really what we're gonna do is twist and get a nice stretch in the right hip. That's really what we're going for. I'll turn a little bit so you can see this better. So I'm pressing my right knee up and over toward the left. And that might be enough. If you're feeling a nice stretch here, you can just hang out right there. If your knee is down here, that's okay too. You're really just looking for a stretch here, that's it. Maybe place your right fingertips behind and start to twist toward the right. And you're twisting from the belly button here. So you're gonna tweak the shoulders. You wanna twist from the belly button. So lift your chest up, long spine. Kind of regal shoulders, all right? And now you're twisting toward the right. You can turn the head to look right. As you hug your right knee in, so you're continuously pulling it over toward the left, and you're getting this nice stretch in the outer right hip. The shoulders hurt it all back up out of it. When I was new to yoga, I used to always tweak my shoulders in this pose because it was pulling so hard to twist. But we want to twist from the belly button, not from the shoulders. So really the arms are just gently pulling. No real sensation in the shoulders. It's all right here. All right, now release that. And you can take a nice little counter twist in the other direction. And then we'll come on back to where we were. So come on back up to your knees. And then we're going to take the other side. So if you're sitting up on something, get that situated, maybe straightening your left leg this time. We're gonna take that side stretch. So this time the left hand goes down, right arm up. And we'll start to side bend, but first we're gonna twist toward the right. So we're gonna turn toward the right and then add the side bend. And that really protects your back when you're doing side bends. You turn your heart toward away from the side bend. So if you're bending to the left, twist to the right. Reach the arm up. If this doesn't feel great on the shoulder, you can also place the hand behind the head. And just breathe into that while you press your armpit away from your toes. Deep, deep breath. One more inhale and exhale it out through an open mouth. Let something go. And then bring that hand down and we'll take the seated spinal twist on this side. So leave your right leg where it is and you're gonna bring your left foot up and over that knee. And I'll turn this way. And we're pressing the knee up and over toward the right. Maybe hold on to that with your right arm and that'll start to twist you from the belly button toward the left. Fingertips behind, tent your fingertips behind so that, that arm, your left arm, is kind of like a post to keep your spine long. The crown of the head and the sit bones just reaching away from each other, not because it looks better, but because it actually gives you a nice healthier twist when you start to twist. Be slumped over like this when you start to twist, you be up. Right, so nice and tall. You can turn the head to look left. Bottom knee can be straight. 
that didn't feel good on your knee. This leg can also be down here if you don't have a lot of mobility in the hip yet. No problem, you're just looking for a nice stretch here. And one thing you'll hear me say over and over again is make the yoga pose fit your body. Don't make your body fit the yoga pose. That's a mistake that a lot of us make when we're new is that we try to, and you can release that, take a nice little counter twist in the other direction. We try to just come into a cross-legged position. We try to reach some kind of aesthetic, right? We see a yoga pose and we go, wow, that looks great. I want to do that. And we try to do it and we end up hurting ourselves. And so, because all of our bodies are different, our anatomies are different, your bones fit differently together than mine do. Um, and mine are different from lots of other people. So what we're going to explore together is how to figure out how to make the yoga pose fit you. And it'll always be unique to you. You may progress from beginner to intermediate and maybe even beyond that. But even so, the yoga poses will still be unique to you. So if you see someone with a super bendy back, that may never be you. That's not me. And I've been doing yoga for 20 years. So it, you have to work with your anatomy to make sure you're doing nice, healthy yoga because it's not about what it looks like anyway. It's about how it feels. I know that Instagram and all the pictures you see of people doing yoga, it's about how it looks, but that's not really reality, right? All right, so let's move on. We're going to take a nice hip stretch. We're going to keep working on the hips. So now we're going to do Baddha Konasana or Butterfly. You may remember this from gym class when you were a kid. So place the bottoms of the feet together and the knees go out to the side. If this doesn't feel great, you can place a cushion or a pillow under your knees. We're just going to sit here for just a minute and we're going to lean forward. So you kind of place the fingertips behind and maybe rock back and forth a little bit to tilt the pelvis forward. So. The reason we want to do that is so that we're not rounding like this. So the chest is reaching kind of up and away from your sit bones. You can use the fingertips behind again like a post. Straighten those arms and that'll start to, to give you that nice quality stretch. You can start to lean forward. You can also sit up on something like a little cushion and that may help you tilt forward. Just press your chest forward. So I'm not trying to get my nose to my toes because that would make me round like this. So I'm just pressing my chest toward the front of the mat. And just take deep breaths into the hips. There's a saying in yoga, if you're feeling it, you're doing it. So if you feel a nice stretch in the outer hips, and you're feeling you know, a little bit of compression in the inner thigh, that's, that's what you're going for. And just breathe into that. And then let gravity do its job. So with every deep breath, you might get a little deeper into the pose. And if your body lets you in, you can let your hands come forward, but continue to press the chest forward. So you're actually looking up, looking straight ahead, Chest presses forward and that helps you continue to tilt the pelvis with a long lower back. Couple more big breaths here. You can inchworm the fingers forward as your body lets you in. But if you're still back here, work that way. And wherever you are, come on up, lean back a little bit, bring the bottoms of the feet to the floor about the width of the mat. You can lean back on your hands. We're just going to windshield wipe the legs just to release that counter pose up. You can stay a little bit on one side and then the other. We're doing an outward rotation of, of the, the thigh, so now we're going to inwardly rotate. Counter pose that. And now we'll move on to Upavishta Konasana, which is a wide-legged forward fold. So bring the legs into a V-shape, toes up to the sky. 
Now, if you're feeling particularly tight, which if you're new to yoga, that's a definite possibility, feel free to put something under your knees, right? So bend the knees and put something under there. Whenever we do a forward fold, bend the knees, if the legs are traditionally straight, bend the knees, and that's gonna help you tilt the pelvis forward like I was talking about before, all right? So place something under there if you want it to, to do that, if that's more supportive. You can just keep them bent, place the fingertips behind, and we're gonna do the same thing. Heart going forward, just start to tilt, and if you're feeling it, you're doing it. If you've got a stretch, hang out there. If the legs want to straighten, that's fine. If not, that's okay too. Deep breaths into the inner legs. If your body lets you in, again, fingertips can come forward, but the chest continues to go straight ahead. If you're feeling flexible and open, maybe your elbows come down to the floor. Maybe you start to bend them. And if that's the case, pull your chest through your elbows so you're still doing that same action. It's actually going to give you a better stretch. If you're up here, that's great. If you're back here, that's great. Deep breaths. One more big breath here. And then we'll release it. Grab a hold of the backs of the legs and we're gonna do the same thing. So bottoms of the feet to the ground, about the width of the mat, start to windshield wipe the legs. And cross the legs and roll over the knees and we're gonna lie down on our bellies. We're gonna do one back bend today but we're gonna be gentle about it. So bring your elbows somewhere under your shoulders. They can be forward like this. That gives you less of a back bend. If they're right under your shoulders, it's gonna give you a little bit more. This is Sphinx pose. And you can figure out why <laughs> it's Sphinx pose because you look like the Sphinx. So you're gonna pull your chest through your shoulders. So pull your elbows back and you'll start to feel a sensation around the mid back. Shouldn't be too much in the lower back. Right? It's more in the middle. Now, if this is too much, bring the elbows forward. If that's still too much, sometimes for some people, just lying on their stomach is enough of a back bend. So maybe stack the fists and rest the forehead. And just hang out there. Wherever you are, maybe close the eyes and breathe deep. And we're gonna be here for about a minute. Pulling the chest through the shoulders unless you're lying down. And you're lifting up out of that. So we're not necessarily crunch down into our shoulders. So lift, press down with your elbows and lift up. You'll feel, it should feel a nice little sensation in the back, a little bit of healthy compression. And if it's too much, lower down. A few more big breaths. Now, wherever you are, lower down. Maybe stack the palms and rest the forehead. And we're just going to release that. So maybe. Let the hips rock back and forth. Press the hands into the ground. Come on up to hands and knees. We'll do a little bit of cat-cow to release that. Not very deep cat-cow, just round the spine. So your top of your head goes toward the ground, round the spine. Take a deep breath in, and the top of your head goes toward the sky. Sit bones go up, so a little bit of an arch. Not too deep. Just mobilizing the spine. So inhaling, arch the spine, exhaling and round. Inhale and exhale. Maybe side to side. We're just trying to loosen that up a little bit. Let the hips come to the heels. Let the knees go wide. 
and then start to fold forward. And we'll take child's pose. So this is our counter pose for Sphinx. And we're just gonna release the back. So here you can, again, stack the fist. You can rest on a cushion. You can lay it right here. If coming all the way down doesn't feel good, you can reach the hands forward. You can let them go behind, whatever you wanna do. Just rest the forehead, deep in the breath, breathe into the back. We're almost done. Couple of big breaths here. Lift the head up, walk the knees forward, roll over onto your hips, and then we'll just lie down on our backs. Bring the knees in toward the chest and grab a hold of the knees and just pull them in a little bit. Just a little bit of a lower back stretch. And then we're gonna add a couple of twists and then we'll rest in Shavasana, final resting pose. So for our twist, bring your feet to the ground, knees up toward the sky. Let the hands float out and the arms float out into a T-shape. So stretch them out, come up onto your toes and then let the knees fall over toward the left. Just a simple twist. Now, if that doesn't feel good, if it brings your shoulder way off the ground, place something under the knees. You can also draw the knees up higher all right, your choice. Make it comfortable, but you're just looking for a nice stretch in the outer right waist and hip. Arms are in a T-shape. You can look toward the right. And just breathe deep, close the eyes. Your hip is pulling away from your armpit. It's just a gentle stretch. And then come on back to center on your next inhale. So inhale, bring the knees up. And then we're just gonna take the other side. So you can do the same thing coming up onto your toes, let the knees fall to the right. Maybe drawing them up closer to your arm. But you want both shoulders on the ground. So if your left shoulder is floating, put something under your knees. You can also press your right shoulder into the ground to help your left stay down. Turn and look toward the left. Close the eyes. Breathe into the side waist. breath here make it a good one inhale through the nose and exhale and inhaling draw the knees back in toward the center bring them up toward the chest maybe wrap the hands around draw them in toward you and then let your legs stretch long along the mat your feet go about the width of the mat just let the feet flop open Hands about a foot away from your hips, palms up toward the sky. Maybe snuggle the shoulders under, get comfortable. And rock the head back and forth, releasing the neck. Close the eyes for Shavasana, corpse pose. And here you can let the breath do whatever it wants. So if you want to take a deep breath, Sigh it out a couple of times to release, relax. Let every muscle release and sink into the floor. 
This is actually the most important part of your yoga practice. It's where the body begins to integrate what it's learned. So never skip a Shavasana. And you can make them as short or as long as you like, but take the time to absorb the yoga practice and observe how you feel. Notice any muscles tightening, release them down. Just scan the body, relax and release. If this feels awesome, stay right here as long as you like. When you're ready, start to bend into the knees and place the bottoms of the feet on the floor. Bring your hands to your upper thighs. Start to deepen the breath, kind of waking the body back up. Maybe draw the knees in toward the chest, wrap your arms around, give them a squeeze. And then make your way up to sit. You can roll over onto one side and press your way up to sit. Take your time, no rush. Find a comfortable seat and simple cross-legged. Just make it comfortable, maybe half lotus. I sit in half lotus because it's more comfortable for my knee, but it doesn't work for a lot of people, so don't bother. It doesn't feel good. Half lotus is just the top of your foot to your upper thigh, and just one foot. Bring the backs of the hands to the knees, close the eyes, and we'll do our closing ritual. It's just, just a moment, in seated, eyes closed. Observe. Notice how you feel compared to how you did at the beginning of class. I always feel like I can breathe better after a, after a yoga class. It just opens everything up. We'll end with a little gratitude. So bring the hands in prayer in front of the heart, bow the head slightly. Thank yourself for taking the time to get on your mat. Thank your breath for being your guide. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed today's class and you're looking for more, join me over on lcyoga.com. There you're gonna find lots of classes and content that doesn't exist here on YouTube. Longer classes, complete beginner series, uh, intermediate flows, um, lots of content that is commercial free and exclusive to the website. So if you're ready, join me on lcyoga.com and I'll meet you there.